So really, I think uh, there are a few knowledge sharing exercises. I would like to do it in the next uh, few minutes, what we have. And uh, we'll see that these are very important initiatives and good practices to be adopted for any e-governance project to be implemented, whether it's planned or is already existing, we have to review it, we have to introduce it. So I think I'll just start with the principle of good governance because this is what the idea was based on which e-governance projects and missions have been created. One is leadership, selflessness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, and honesty. This is, I think, the kind of attributes we should have for good governance. Then we like to see on the other side, humane. That means we have to be personal touch for every citizen of India, citizen-centric services. Uh, maybe on-demand, demand-based governance also, we should be in a position to do it in a short possible time. Should be creative, use knowledge in national, for national wealth and health creation, understand the economics of knowledge, and high morality we should have. I think this is the whole idea of attributes and properties of the kind of good governance what we like to adopt it. So I think we just want to start with four mantras of good digital governance from vision, mission, implementation, impact study, improvisation, leadership, and alignment, we should have a kind of continuity. I think what is missing today is most of the things because of the kind of human resources are not continued, except for the staff at the below level. So we have to see the kind of continuity is established for any e-governance project to take off. Second, is projects, e-governance projects, we have to formulate, we have to architect, we have to design, we have to construct, we have to comprehensive multi tier reviews, and monitoring and feedback control system to be built in. I think we have a lot of stages here. I am not making a project as a project management exercise, but a project as a project governance exercise. I think this is what I think we like to advocate as a good practice there. The third point was collaborate, communicate, cooperate, co-work, and coexist. I think this is what the kind of things we need. The kind of uh, uh, attributes, our humanities, our interfaces we should have in terms of having the multi-stakeholders interest to be kept in view. Logical process integration, I think we look for ERP, but ERP is not enough. We need business intelligence to come into the line. There's another layer to be added. So what we need is a kind of thing is accountable, transparent, and open government we should do. That's what the idea of e-governance scheme is. Next, I think uh, we just wanted to see the good practice of foundations of architecting e-governance space. See, architecting a governance space was not understood earlier when we started in 1976 or 77, the whole automation of the government projects or government uh, systems. But uh, yeah, what we need here is a kind of structured e-governance strategy exercise. I think very, very important aspect of a good practice we should have. But of course, citizen projects have come with this kind of things when consultant is able to prepare this. Second is, ensure your e-governance strategy has a sound underlying architecture. We need an architecture. See, what we need is not a constructor. We have been engaging programmers to construct a kind of systems. The architecture is not defined properly, fully. That's why we have a problem of replication, because human resource interfaces are not added there. Create a single high-level strategic body. It's not that empty mission. Unfortunately, I think uh, I was in the IT department of Government of India for quite nearly 35 years. And now, also, for the last 15 years, I've been advising the General of India for reviewing the projects. But really, I think we are not seeing one good project strategized, architected, implemented to the extent replicatable. I think we are looking into the kind of good practice to be followed there. Don't let strategy become detached from local realities. I think things cannot be designed in Delhi, implemented all over the country. Local stake has to be taken into account. You know, I'll give you an example here, the Railways Passenger Reservation System project. When we designed the architecture of this project, we discussed with the lowest level of LDs clerks in the railway counters. We asked them what is the kind of issues we like to have. Because of the participation of them, we never had any problem of implementing the project in the railway system at all. Because the kind of things what we need is stakeholders' interest has to be created. We may not accept all their ideas. We may not solve all the problems. But still, we are in a position to address this. So this, I think, very kind of things where we need a participation of constitutional system design requirements is very essential. Advocate and implement project governance not project management. Let me give an example here. I think uh, within the four walls I can share. We have IT mission projects in IT department, four of them. State data centers, CSC, and our SWAN. And what are the three mission projects we have? Three mission directors are there. Do they talk to each other? When the project is completed, they say, two leads are given, SWAN is connected. 
What to do with that kind of thing connection? CAC is there, infrastructure is made. Data center is the data is accumulated there. But what do we assure the services of citizens through this, all these mechanisms? I think there's a missing link is integration of the missions together to achieve the goal. What we have is government as one in the website. We don't have government as one in the business of allocation rules. I think administrative departments are designing the processes where IT department gives the technology part of it. So maybe we have to work together much more closer than what we have been doing for the last few years. Maybe possibly this is one of the lessons we learned. Maybe that good practice if it's followed, really achieve good governance there. Make your e-government vision clear, collective, challenging, and customized. I think very, very important aspect of share of knowledge. The objectives of e-government strategy should be smart. Okay, of course, smart governance, everybody knows about the definitions. So it is for the people, by the people, of the people. This is what political people say, mandates say. But really, the government has to work when automation is going to help backend pros as well as front-end delivery system has to co coexist together. Next is, I think, uh, four dimensions of e-governance I want to advocate here. One is information dimension, the process dimension, the objectives and values dimension, the management systems and structure dimension. I think it's all these four things, if you structure well, architect yourself, you will see the project will not fail. Next is fighter architecture of e-governance space. Data architecture, process architecture, technology architecture, data management architecture, management architecture. I think to create a building, you need a sound underlying architecture for the building based on architect's plan. The same is true for e-government. I think we have to see the kind of structurally the architectures are made, layers are built in, layers are designed, constructed, implemented, reviewed, and this will give the kind of good things of architect in the e-governance space. Next is technology selection. I think I was talking to DMRC chairman earlier, should not be leading edge not be building edge as it vendor driven. I think what we need is appropriate, acceptable, sustainable, implementable, maintainable technology for India to be selected. I think very, very important aspect of the technology selection process. Should not be outdated. Should not be current, so current, it should not be outdated. Based on connectivity levels and technological standards available right now, work with and connect directly to all end users rather than intermediaries. I think prototype or pilot your project. Stakeholder involvement is a must for every level of interaction, what we are going to design an architect. This is the space. Next, I think uh, the overall, what we need to advocate here is overall vision strategy for e-government, which is already there now, national e-governance plan. Project management for e-governance. I think it's a project is very, very important aspect of project management exercise coming up because we have bad experience of implementing projects in time, on time, every time. I think we need the kind of things, lessons learned, where we fail. I think I have two more slides to share, share this. Change management for e-government. Uh, politics and self-interest in e-government, whether to have it or not to have it, as a question of debatable point there. The design of e-government applications. The competency, skills for e-government. Technological infrastructure for e-government. External internal drive for e-government. E-government projects need managers, but also need leaders as well. Because only leaders can take the kind of costs for the kind of drives, decisions they can make. So next is, I think, strengthening integration of multi-stakeholders. What we need is operational integration, professional integration, emotional, cultural integration. I think the project, like you take Passport eSeva project, or Passport Seva project, it works very well in Chennai, but does not work in Bihar. Why? Because people are different. The culture is different. The ethical practices are different. So really, I think we are liking the kind of things, emotional, cultural integration is not made to the project design itself. The project will never succeed. It may succeed in uh, islands. Next, the ICT in government business and services integration. I think very, very important aspect. It is not a service delivery of ISO 20,000 standard we can make, but really what services we want to give, who will assure the services up and as designed, is a question of implementing strategies and implementation of things. Multi-technology coexistence. I think technology is coming to various parts of life. But is the technology coexistence converge? Convergence of technology happen. People don't have it. So I think we have to really have seamless integration is happen and information assurance. See, data center does not assure information is correct, timely. It is, uh, it is somebody assures that information is correct. Who assures that? I think the kind of stakeholder department concerned has to assure that. If the multi-department is there, then we have to do this kind of thing. So quality, currency, customization, personalization, very important for e-governance architecture. Next. See, I think uh, failures, how to avoid failures. I think nobody shares the failure studies. Everybody says success stories. So let me give you the kind of things where we said failed strategies or failed implementation of projects or non-replicatable projects we have. So we have reviewed the, some of them, and maybe some ideas I'd like to share with you. 
use structured project management, graduate to project governance. I think project management is done as long as the leader is there, driver is there. When driver is missing, everything goes off, right? This is what exactly happening. Move from democrat to autocrat. When you implement a strategy, when you implement a project, IT mission project, be autocrat there, not a democrat there. Set clear, go no, no criteria for the e-governance project. I think somewhere you have to decide. When you're in the middle of the project, you want to stop, you stop it. Don't tell until it fails, right? I think the cost of corrections is large at a time when implemented, right? It is never too late to stop. I think this is not the thing. Project management is not the same as other management. I think IT project management is something different. We have to learn lessons from there. Next is uh, ideas about design. I want to give three ideas, uh, two ideas here. Prototype and pilot your project. Okay, that's been done. Pilots are successful always. We hope inaugurate it. We launch it. Replication has not happened. It stops with pilot. Why? We review this project, then we see the kind of stakeholders' interests are different. See, I think uh, there is one thing we have learned lesson of some things, like even Bumi project, which got a Stockholm Award, is not replicatable because the, uh, the driver behind that was able to integrate two wings of the Department of Government there. Third wing is not done, right? So really, I think we need revenue management, land use, land management, land revenue, and land registration. has to come together to talk about the land registration project, including GIA special, special integration, which is not done. Stakeholder involvement is a must, okay? Third is avoid the bleeding edge. I think what we need is a kind of, the technology is a bleeding edge. See, your adopted technology if it's not put in proper use, maybe it's a failure. I think uh, this is one thing we have to learn. Who will fix the technology when it goes wrong in six months' time, right? So I think we have to find out the kind of maintainability of the technology, sustainability of technology. You see the various projects here. I think I'll not, go, I'll not have time to share this kind of project reviews done, but this is one of the things we learned. Uh, we have to fix up uh, fixing technology when it goes wrong within six months' time. Achha. Next is, I think you see the kind of evolution of the e-governance phase. We need a kind of presence, interaction, transaction, transformation, and uh, their kind of uh, outsourcing. I think we went to the jump to the outsourcing without going to the stages of maturity. I think we need a maturity model for e-governance implementation. I think we need level five scales of CMM level five. We need a level five scale for government e-governance maturity models. I think I have a paper on that, but anyway, this is not the time, but we need a maturity model to talk about it. So next is, I think, synthesization of polity and bureaucracy to implement governance to realize India had a developed economy. Very, very important aspect of bureaucracy and polity to work with the governance schemes. I think this is another thing where we are going for a PPP model. This is a kind of model which is sustained, which has to be implemented, which is easier for us to do it. We need customers, competitors, regulators, community, and others. There is no single regulating agency for e-governance. Unfortunately, we don't want a regulating agency. We want a good practicing agency to be complied with, so that we will see the compliance of their good practices only. We will not see the kind of things. I think we have a lot of standards. Let me give one example here, standards. We have ISO 14000 standard, which is supposed to be environmental physical security standards. Right? We need exercise, access to physical infrastructure, ICT infrastructure. I think it has to be available, serviceable, maintainable, and 24 by 7 availability has to be assured. Next is 9000 certification of ISO 9000, it's called the management standard. We have 9000 model, so many people have got ISO 9000 certificate for this. We have a COSO standard for risk management standard. I think we have to look into the kind of risk management strategies and mitigation of risk. We have a COVID standard, which is called audit management practices. I think we have to include that. The system to be auditable, verifiable, acceptable, right? Then we have a kind of ISO 77000 standard, which is called security management standards. We have ISO 20,000 standards, which is called security service delivery standards. I think we are going to achieve Six Sigma, failure in one in Sigma, one in a million. I think we are trying to see that each standard address a different space in the enterprise space. We have to integrate these standards. And BI standards, when I was the chairman of the committees, we are trying to work out group standards for every specific sectors, for e-governance also to work with multi-stakeholder interest standards there. So this model is called assurance model in a PPP environment. We have, it's implementable model. We have to see how to implement it in the whole e-governance exercise, what we have undertaken or what we are doing now. I think let us stop here. And then thank you very much for giving me a chance to share our knowledge. And thank you very much.